Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and we are at the Mitral Conclave in New York City and I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Patrick McCarthy who is the Executive Director of the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago. Dr. McCarthy, we've known each other for a long time. Long time. 10 years. Yep. You performed thousands of mitral valve operations which brings you to New York. But it's not just about mitral valve disease, why people are here. There's related cardiac diseases that may require concomitant procedures like atrial fibrillation. I feel like it's almost a state of the union with Dr. McCarthy. What is the connection between AFib and mitral valve disease and does it get treated often? Yeah. So uh, first of all, it's very common in patients with mitral valve disease. Um, when your valve leaks or if it's tight, the pressures in the left atrium, the upper chambers are very high and it gets stretched out and that causes atrial fibrillation. So instead of beating, the atria are just quivering and they form blood clots that could cause a stroke. So patients have to go on a blood thinner. So serious business. And if you have a stroke from atrial fib, those are much more likely to be fatal because they're big clots or leave people disabled. So you want to get it treated. And by treatment, uh, can you explain what you do in the operating room and getting back to that question, is this something that's always treated? So a couple of things. So um, it's not always treated. Um, you know, with a guy, Jim Cox, that invented the Cox Maze procedure, he's with me at Northwestern now. Um, we're, we treat 100% of patients that have it, so we always treat it. But if you look around the country, it's more like 60%, maybe even less around the world. So, um, But we are seeing an increase in adoption that people are doing this more. How do we do it? It's called the maze procedure. It's an ablation. So we know where atrial fib begins, and then we ablate that area to reduce the chance that patients will go back into atrial fib. A really important part is we close the left atrial appendage where the blood clots form. And that is what reduces the strokes. I've heard there's some research going on about the left atrial appendage and maybe a clinical trial. What can you share with the patients about some new research? Yeah, a new study came out, it's called LAUS-3. It is about patients that have atrial fib that are going through heart valve surgery or either coronary bypass, any kind of open heart operation. Uh, they did a big study, followed the patients for a year. Half of them, they closed that left atrial appendage. It reduced their risk of stroke by 35%. So it was really effective at reducing their risk for a stroke. So if a patient is listening and they have atrial fib and they're going in for open heart surgery, they should be having this discussion with their doctor about treating it while they're there. And so for the patients, would you say that's the big takeaway is to fix it all? Yes. Um, what I tell patients is that if it's broken when we're working under the hood, we're just going to fix it, whatever it is. So, uh, But if they have atrial fib, it really doesn't have that much to the surgery these days to treat it. And the data is more and more evident that it has a long-term benefit. Uh, it is the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Well, Dr. McCarthy, you have fixed a lot of patients from the heartvalvesurgery.com community, many patients watching. And I just want to thank you and your team at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago. Thanks so much. So Thanks, much Adam. For Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen, or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.